So one of the major areas of, uh, of interest in the lab is to understand how myelin is formed. And in order to do that, we can study how myelin develops in a young uh, individuals growing up. And what we can see is that if you think of an analogy of myelin as being a car, where, where myelin production is going to be measured by how much the car can drive, you can envision how, in order to allow the car to move, so to allow myelin to form, you would need to have your foot on the accelerator and not have anything on the brakes. The way, in reality, development works is that first, these cells that are called progenitor cells have, a, have the equivalent of putting the foot on the brake so that there is no myelin when a child is very young, there is no myelin when people get very old in the case of remyelination failure. In both cases, very young or old, or also in cases of multiple sclerosis with remyelination failure, the problem is that there is a lot of emphasis on the break, and therefore new myelin cannot be formed. So what we've been trying to understand is why are there so many breaks and how can we remove them? We have developed actually with some chemical engineers new compounds that would act precisely on this mechanism of what allows the progenitor to put the brake so that we can remove it. And this is where we have really tried to understand whether environmental causes can affect gene expression, thereby balancing acceleration versus brakes. And while that talk was more focused on the immune system, we have been asking the same question in the brain. And our question is, how does exercise, diet, the type of food that you eat, microbiome affect myelin gene expression? And you can envision that environmental influences might have a very deep effect on the life of a patient. They do not replace the medication, they do not change the genes, but they do affect the ability that the brain has to repair itself. So we have very interesting data in, um, in animal models of the disease that definitely very strongly support the effect of the environment on potentiating brain repair. Conversely, we also have interesting data suggesting that bad diet or sedentary life could just decrease the repair ability of the brain itself. And more recently, we also have started this very interesting um, project in, in patients where we are trying to address also the effect on the microbiome itself. So there is a lot of interest right now to try to translate those observations into clear indication where we are trying to address also the effect on the microbiome itself. So there is a lot of interest right now to try to translate those observations into clear indication. I know that for patients, it's a critical question. Can I do something for the disease, right? I mean, I'm taking my medication, but, and, and sometimes there is some level of frustration, right? So my hope is that we can really develop a scientific basis to support this wellness approach with patients.